Welcome everybody, this is Microsoft 365 Power Platform a Community Call, and this is the Tuesday uh, edition uh, where we always have Microsoft presenters uh, with certain exceptions. Like today, actually, we do have a one person who's going to do a great demo, which we're going to talk about in a second, who's not a Microsoft presenter, but related on something what Microsoft has organized. My name is Jose Yvonne, and I'm a Principal Product Manager in Microsoft 365 Platform areas. And um, today, as mentioned, we will have a great, great, great show with three different demos. So we're going to keep the pace again pretty high, um, but that's highly intentional as well because there's so many cool things getting released and, and uh, done and created within the Microsoft Cloud and we want to show a lot of, lot of stuff to you every single week. So we'll do a typical setup on covering latest updates and news in the Microsoft 365 platform, uh, latest news in the ground Microsoft uh, blogs and also a group picture uh, time and we took get a mode for those who are willing to participate on that one. We have 50 seats so you need to be fast on enabling that camera whenever we go there unless you keep the camera on earlier. Now we do have then three stars of today or three demos with four stars of today. So Stuart and Marcus are going to talk about why build Power Platform solutions in Microsoft Teams. Then Gary is going to talk all about uh, bringing your existing projects to Microsoft Teams for Visual Studio Code, which is a super important thing as well to understand if you have had existing investments already in the Microsoft Teams and how you can take advantage of the Teams toolkit. And then uh, Ahmad uh, Moseraf is not Microsoft uh, presenter, but he was part of the Microsoft Craft Hackathon and he is one of the winners from there. And, and he's going to show a magic note app to plan the day efficiently with artificial intelligence and Microsoft Craft. And that looks really, really cool as well. Now, uh, like typically, we do recap some of the slides uh, because we always have new people joining on the call and we actually get that as a positive feedback that we do this. So we have our YouTube channel at AKMS uh, Community Videos and in here we have all of the different community call recordings and individual demos. We do release at least a one video guidance video every single business day. Uh, so you want to subscribe there to stay up to date on what's happening within uh, these areas. We also have our relatively new LinkedIn group for discussions and updates. That is a group. So it's really intended to, for you to also submit news and updates, which other people can uh, comment and and, uh, and and find out as well. A relatively new thing uh, as well, but we're hitting already 500 uh, attendees in that group, which is awesome. We do have our open source assets available, and there's a lot of them. So a lot of repositories across the GitHub, but as it might be a bit difficult to find a relevant sample for you, we also have the specific sample galleries, which are a really easy way to access the different samples which are available across Microsoft 365 and Power Platform. So you can easily go, for example, to the unified sample gallery area and then filter down your search to find the relevant sample for you. Then we have our and you're wondering recap. If you're wondering that there's too many URLs to remember, and there's luckily only one, which is AKMS Community Home, and from there you'll find all of the assets and more and more information. We also have quite a lot of community calls. This is also highly intentional. We do not expect you to join on all of them, uh, but and we record all of these calls and we publish individual demos from the calls as individual videos as well. We have the Tuesday one, which is 8 a.m. Tuesday every single week, except during summer break and the holiday break, winter time in the Northern Hemisphere. We do have a few weeks off in both uh, ends. We'll probably start this year, uh, our summer break, uh, by end of uh, June, and then we'll come back on the roughly on mid-August. We'll share more details on the timings a bit closer. We have our monthly Power Platform call, monthly Microsoft Identity uh, call, or monthly Office Adding call, and then we have our 7 a.m. Thursday series, which is either Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community or, we, or Viva Connection and SharePoint Framework call. In these calls on Thursdays, it's more community demos, which are really, really cool as well, because we learn from each other. So we learn from the uh, learnings and the solutions what other people built um, and sharing those learnings is really valuable as well. Now, if you're looking into where to download all of this, AKMS forward slash community calls, you have more details from the timings in there. Uh, agendas are always published within a week before, roughly a week before, at the meetup at the AKMS community meetup. Now, I mentioned that the Thursday series is all about community demos. Preferably, uh, we are looking into having community demos in the Thursday calls, and we would love you to sign up for those things. Of course, uh, Whenever you're submitting a sample, if you're contributing uh, as a sample to our existing GitHub, we always suggest that you would actually sign up to do a live demo of those contributions as well. It's AKMS forward slash community forward slash request and demo, and we'll get you then scheduled on the right call depending on the demo content. 
Now, we do have a lot of getting started assets available for Microsoft 365. Uh, both, uh, you'll get a free Microsoft 365 tenant, uh, which will renew automatically after 90 days, um, as long as you use it for developer usage. And that's a great way of getting a free environment, which you can use for development purposes. And there's a lot of, lot of learning material available from the Microsoft Learn. We also have our three different uh, podcasts or video blogs available. So Microsoft 365 Dev Podcast, which is hosted by uh, Aisha Bass, Jeremy Thake, or Paul Shuffelin, depending on the week and depending on a topic. We have our weekly PMP Weekly, which is kind of logical, weekly PMP Weekly, uh, with me and, and Wallet Mastercards. Uh, and then we have our AKMS Power Platform Connections with David uh, Warner and Hugo Bernier. So depending on your interest, you can subscribe in all of them. We Although when we mentioned uh, the sample galleries, I did forget about updating that number. I think it's now 1,650 samples available from Microsoft and community from one centralized location. And we're really looking into this to be the easiest way for you to find the relevant sample for you. You can go there, use a keyword search, uh, and, and filter down based on the categories or the product type, uh, what is the query, what you're looking for. Now, as you then find the sample, you might be wondering that, okay, here's a sample in a GitHub. What do I do now? Well, we got you covered there as well. We have our Sharing is Caring initiative, and David Warner is going to talk about what is that all about. Awesome. Thank you, Vesa. Well, as he had mentioned, friends, that if you're in the hub of Gits or GitHub, uh, and you may not be familiar with that landscape. So Sharing is Caring is a program set up of sessions that we will meet together live on Teams calls in a safe space, meaning they're not recorded, and we'll walk through how to accomplish any number of these upcoming session topics. Now, we uh, are trying to scale these sessions, so we're looking for volunteers in the community that are looking to assist. Uh, maybe you'd like to help host some of these sessions. We really want to be able to scale the timeframes and the sessions topics and the number of sessions that are available, uh, but we need help to do that. So reach out to Hugo and I uh, if you would like to be part of that. We're looking to scale that up, uh, but otherwise keep an eye at aka.ms slash sharing is caring for more scheduled sessions. Vesa, back to you. Excellent. Thank you for that one. Uh, really, really cool. Now, then uh, let's do a quick recap on the event. So next week, a lot of us, <laughs> a lot of us, thank you. A lot of us will be at Las Vegas. Uh, we have the Microsoft 365 uh, conference there, uh, starting actually on Sunday uh, with a lot of CVP and president uh, presenters from Microsoft. There's going to be some new announcements coming out next week as well. So really, really cool opportunity of meet people in person. Now, a bit later uh, in May, we have the European Collaboration Summit on this side of the pond, because I'm actually located in Helsinki right now. Uh, Las Vegas on that side of the bond, which is on the US, uh, USA. Uh, European Collaboration Summit happens in Dusseldorf uh, in Germany uh, in 24th to 26th of May. So there's going to be pre-day workshops on the 24th and then two days of uh, actual conference in person meetups. Really, really great conference as well. And it's a non-profit community driven conference, which makes it, makes it pretty cheap, which is really, really cool. We also have a, a 365 Edugon happening in June 12th to 16th in uh, DC. That's one way of actually on that side of the bone again to meet uh, other people in person and then Seattle and Chicago coming later this year. And then we do have, uh, coming back to Europe side, we do have the European Power Platform Conference happening at Dublin 20 to 22nd of June. Great, great, great venue as well. Been there a few times presenting. It's a really, really great convenient location. On top of that, we have a lot of uh, in-person uh, opportunities to meet up worldwide. So if you go to the community days to dork, you'll see all of the individual smaller uh, conferences and events and get togethers. Um, so these are user groups, smaller conferences, or some of these are actually even virtual. So they can be virtual, hybrid, or in person. So have a look on the what's available uh, closer to you. Um, and then maybe you want to meet other people in the community uh, within those locations. Now, quick recap also on news. Uh, we did have a three news on the Microsoft 365 developer side. First one was the new Azure AD app name for Microsoft Craft PowerShell SDK and CLI. Not a significant news. It's basically just making an announcement that the Azure AD application name for Microsoft Craft PowerShell will be adjusted a bit to be aligned, not to be just about PowerShell, but also about CLI, just in case that's causing you maybe an automation things which you might need to take into account. Typically, that would not be the case. Then there was the April update on the Teams toolkit uh, for Visual Studio Code. Uh, great summary on what's happening in the Visual Studio uh, Code side and related on the features which are coming in the Visual Studio Code V5. And then there was an update uh, 
uh, actually, unfortunately, a breaking update on OData property changes in a call records change notification in Microsoft Graph. So if you're looking at some of, or using some of those objects in Microsoft Graph, please have a look on that it's not impacting your solution. On other blocks, uh, there was a celebration uh, success using together images in Microsoft Teams and interesting new support, uh, supported features in the Microsoft Teams for high fives. And that's a, kind of a funny thing. Um, and then there's a unblocking Viva deployment adaption and join 300 plus Viva customers impacting Viva engineering. So on Viva side, there's a lot of, lot of new assets available and community engagement available. So if you are using any of the Viva modules, have a look on what's available within there. Before we go to the together mode picture, let's also recap what's happening in the Teams platform uh, documentation side. And Sur P is here to cover the latest in there. Thank you, Vesa. Hello, everyone. So today we have two updates. The first one being you can develop your apps with Teams Toolkit in Developer Portal. So do try it out. Second, we've introduced contextless app upgrade. An app is automatically updated in real time everywhere it's installed for the user. This means that there are no changes to the experience for auto upgrades and for updates where a property changes or RSE permissions are changed, the user is only required to consent once. The documentation uh, link is provided and you can see how they can uh, provide an enhanced and seamless app upgrade experience for their app users. So do try it out. If you have any feedback or suggestion, please post on aka.ms Teams platform feedback. The link is available in the footer. You could also configure to the RSS feed to get regular platform updates. So thank you, everyone. Over to you, Vesel. Excellent. Thank you, Sorpri, on that one. And Gary, you're still in the house. I am, yes. Uh, just a very quick recap for the Teams Toolkit Cloud Skills Challenge, which has been hosted by uh, Louise Fries. Uh, so it is on its uh, near final day. It ends tomorrow on the 26th of April. So if you have been putting it off, you want to go and uh, complete the challenge and go to aka.ms slash learn teams talk it sign up for the challenge and uh, hopefully you might win a prize as well and learn some really cool uh, new knowledge of how to build Microsoft Teams apps. Back to Excellent. you, Ben. Excellent. Thank you, Gary. So let's do a quick crew photo. Um, and uh, we'll wait for, wait for a while. We have 50 seats in the room. I will enable my camera. Uh, the pixelation isn't too bad today. This is good. This is good. Uh, 50 seats. I got in the row as well. A few more seats in the room. Let's not. And we're not recording yet. We're not recording yet. Let me put the recording on and let's do some hand waving. We'll grab a key animation out of done. So thanks everybody for joining. Really awesome to have you once again in the call. This is good. A lot of people, <laughs> yes, awesome. A lot of people in the in the house or in the room. <laughs> good partying on the front row. Awesome. Really, really cool. Excellent. We'll craft a GIF animation out of that. And then it is time for the real stars of the day. And we are right on schedule, which is awesome. So 15 minutes per demo. We'll start with Stuart and Marcus to talk about why to build Power Platform solution in Microsoft Teams. And I think Stuart is going to jump on your screen. Yeah, we, we will jump over to mine. Well, thank you everybody for inviting us along today. Um, so Marcus and I are from the Teams product group. We both work in Teams engineering, building the product that we're using today. Um, I am the customer PM for the UK. So I work with all of our strategic customers to help them get the most out of Teams. And Marcus is my partner in crime for Europe and um, doing all things solutions and, and development and, and power platform within Teams as well. So what we were keen to talk to you about today is why build power solutions inside Teams and why does that matter to our end users and to our customers and, and to the product. So um, as you guys would have probably been aware from many, many talks uh, that we've had before, um, Teams is about meeting, chatting, calling, collaborating apps. And what we've seen over the past couple of years is that we have a fantastic boost in meeting, chat and calling, but we have a way to go for collaboration and apps really bringing in some of the um, contextual information from applications into those calls and chats and meetings that our customers are having at, at an enterprise level. And that goes for your third party tools, but also for your line of business tools as well. So when we think about applications in Teams, um, 
what we've found is that on average, people will have about 10 apps open a day. They'll be switching between those apps about 25 times a day. Now, what does that mean if you um, have invested in a power platform solution outside of Teams? It means that you've got this unique process. You've got everyday um, tasks being handled by that power platform solution. But what we're regularly seeing is that people are going to be jumping across that application, consuming some data, jumping back into Teams and calling their colleagues and having a conversation about it. So there's lots of copy and pasting, there's lots of screenshots of information, there's lots of sharing your desktop and, and driving that, um, that meeting based on what they're seeing inside that third party solution. Um, and users can't act on that information. So they might make a decision um, in that meeting or in that chat about something they want to do but then when it comes to actioning it they've got to jump back into that power solution again they've maybe got to have three or four people all looking up the same information in that power platform solution that's a lot of waste of time and it really isn't bringing context to those those two solutions together so what we really want to do is encourage our customers to be thinking more about how they can create a solution both with the power platform and with teams coming together to make a a solution that's better than the sum of its parts. It's using those collaboration features inside Teams to, to enable people to chat, but it's bringing that bespoke information, that bespoke um, functionality that someone's created within the Power Platform. So we can streamline access to chat, to calling, meeting features of Teams. We can enhance the existing chats and, and meetings inside Teams, avoiding that copy and paste. We can provide access to those common features that people might be using their Power App for. And then we can obviously access that app um, from within teams where a lot of people are already getting on with their their day-to-day -day work with their colleagues with their files we can bring their tools in there as well to, to really make it a well-rounded experience and when we think about teams and power platform it's really not just about the power app and on often what we see is that a customer their first instinct is to wrap up that power app into a Teams app and pin it to the left rail that's their way of initially getting that that application into teams that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about going further. We're looking at really com creating composite solutions of elements of Teams and the Power Platform suite coming together. So using a bit of Power Automate, a bit of virtual agents, a bit of Power Apps to really come up with something quite special that then takes advantage of those out-the-box features that, that we see in Teams today to kind of let the product breathe in a way. We provide the information from the Power App and then people can crack on with Teams the way that they have been doing in, in the past to, to get things done. So if we have a look at an example, I've um, been working with an um, airport in London where they have a program of work called Here to Help. So the idea behind that is that all of their office staff are supposed to sign up to several Here to Help sessions throughout the year and they go into the airport and they will support their security um, team or their customer service team in helping with customers and, and you know, moving the processes forward through the airport. They'll They'll have to do this at points during the year anyway, but often when there's busy periods, um, Christmas, Easter, that sort of thing, they'll, they'll be pulled into health as well. So they used to do this um, by creating a power app, which they used to manage all of their shifts. People would go and they would sign up to a shift. And then when their shift was due to start, a shift manager would create a Teams um, group chat, they would pull in people from that shift. They might share some documents into that shift, so like a floor plan of the terminal or an FAQ, and they might give some information to the people on that shift, such as what's happened previously on the shift before, um, or you know, what are the things that those people need to, to know about. Now, obviously, there are some shortfalls here. Um, it's great that they've got this, this power app um, driving that behavior. They're not using pen and paper anymore, which is amazing. But um, by by not automating the, the team side of that chat, there's obviously um, errors that could be introduced here. We've had issues before where people haven't been added into the chat, so they've got confused about what's going on. There's lots of duplication. There's lots of people working in a silo and not really understanding what's going on a lot of the time. So what we did with this customer was we introduced the concept of bringing their power platform solution and teams together um, to create something that was a little bit more automated um, and not working in silos anymore. So the thing that we did initially, as you can see on the left here, is we you know, we, we did wrap and, and pin that up. We, we said, okay, let's, let's grab that power app, let's put it inside a team. Because there was already a program team where people were going and learning about the program, learning about shifts they could sign up to. Um, so we figured, let's, let's get the app in the place where they're used to going, so at least it's easy to find. 
That was step number one to make it easy to access. Step number two was all around what happens once that shift has started. So at the beginning of a shift, we automatically now post an adaptive card with some information about that shift into a channel. So different, different channels for different terminals. And we have a tag automatically created based on the people who are assigned to that shift. So we post a channel with information, we at mention people in the tag, which means everybody inside that team that signed up with the program, they're going to get a notification if they signed up to that shift today. They can then have conversations um, based on that shift. So they've got context of the shift, they can have a conversation about where they need to be, um, tell people if they're running late, click a button to say that they're confirmed on site, et cetera, et cetera. But the idea here is we're, we're letting teams breathe. So we're able to do things like share FAQs, share the floor plan into the file section of that channel because they don't change. They're going to be consistent anyway. So we may as well just have them, them be similar. We can also have people scroll up and see the previous shift. So if there's anything hanging around from, from earlier in the day, issues that went and went on that people might need to know about, it's very easy for them to find out what happened and, and therefore perform accordingly. Similarly, if something goes wrong with, um, with the automation process, people can self-serve. If I know I'm meant to be on a shift in Terminal 5, but I didn't get my notification, I can just go into that team, see Terminal 5, and send a message to the shift leader to say, hey, I didn't get this tag, but I am here. I'm going to be turning up today. Let me know where you want me. I can also move from Terminal 5 to Terminal 4 really seamlessly. So we're really opening up a lot of value just by bringing these two products together. And we've been getting really good feedback from, from the airport about um, how this is going to work. So when we think about scenarios of what to light up inside Teams, what I try to help my customers think through is what are the right power platform apps to think about teamifying? Because if you've got something which is only used on a one-to-one -one scenario, you probably aren't going to get much value from teamifying that in, inside Teams in every case. So picking an, an application where you know, I might go to that to that app and then I might go and call my colleague about it. Or I might screenshot something to them and, and send it across to them in, in a chat tool. They're the sorts of things that, that are really helpful to, to get started with. So the things I ask them to think about is, first of all, consider just embedding that inside a tab or inside a personal app just to get you started. And if you do that, you can make your application contextually aware. So if we were to pin our tab, our app that we just saw inside the Terminal 5 channel, we could let that app know that it's in the Terminal 5 channel. It could behave accordingly. So that's, that's kind of step one. Step two is to consider what would it look like if we pushed information from the app into Teams. So if I had a Share to Teams button inside that application, what's the top three pieces of information I might share to my colleague? Normally, I'm, I'm going to give them a call. I'm going to tell them about it. But this is a, a bit more automatic. We're going to be automating that. So what are these three bits of information I want to share? I might want to share. The next is, what are the three actions that we might then do after we've had a conversation? Do I assign a task to myself? Do I order more stock? Do I close something as done? Those sorts of things really help us because what we can then do is we can create an adaptive card with that top information that we want to share with our colleague and some action buttons as well. So that once we've had a discussion about the data inside that card, we can act on it right away without having to bounce backwards and forwards um, of the app. And then we can also add a more details button. As the important thing to remember is that we're augmenting this app now. We're not going to be moving all of the functionality into Teams. It makes sense to still go back into the app and deep link into a certain part of data based on that, that card that we saw there. So we've, we've kind of done the push, the push from the app into Teams. Now we think about the other way around. What if I'm pulling information from Power Platform into Teams? So I might do that automatically. Something might happen where I want to set a trigger. So say something in a factory goes wrong. I might want to take some information and push that into a team so that people can swarm on that data. And again, see key information, deep link back to a power app or, um, or action something with, within teams based on what we talk about. I might also want to create a message extension. So if I'm having a discussion um, with my colleagues, I might want to click on my message extension and pull information out um, of my application and then push that into teams again using the same adaptive card. And then finally, if we're thinking about um, contact information within that Power application, 
maybe there's a way that I could quickly link to that information from the app. So if I have a phone number, for example, or a, a chat button, so I can very easily click on that button inside my Power App and jump out to a chat with, um, with my colleague to, to talk to them in Teams. So that's kind of everything we wanted to talk about today in terms of why you might do this. And then I'm going to hand over to Marcus now where we can have a sneak peek into uh, next week's session where we're going to start talking about how you would actually go and implement some of these things that we've just talked about. So Marcus, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Stuart. Uh, yeah, if you can see those. Uh, yeah, so next, next week I'm going to be here again to present a sample application that we developed and that basically brings to life everything that Stuart just, just said here. Uh, so, at this example, we have an incidents application, and as you can see, we have a team there, the incidents team with different channels, the health and safety, HR, and supply chain. And what this app is doing is, is a context-aware app. So, it knows it's running on the incidents team, and it knows it's the health and safety channel. So, I can filter the incidents to show, you know, if I open this app in the health and safety team, I want to see only health and safety incidents. So what that does is that saves user time, you know, they can focus only on the information that they need to see and they need to work on. So that's totally possible to do with, uh, with Power Apps by using the Teams integration object. And uh, next week I'm gonna actually show that and I can go more deep on the technical, how you can do that. Yeah, other thing that we have implemented in this application is a share functionality. So imagine I have a gallery, I click on one incident, and I want to share that with a colleague to have a discussion about it, right? So we just click one button there, and we have the option to share with someone or share in a channel. And when you do that, we trigger a Power Automate flow that's going to send an adapt card like this one in the middle there. And it has all the important, most important information about that incident. So, you know, people can straight away have a read on and have a context of what's going on. And we provide an assign to me button. So that's what we meant about having some quick actions. So the user doesn't have to open the app, search for the incident to them, assign that incident to them. With one click one on the adapt card, they can do that straight away from there. And also, they can have discussions there, right? They can mention people and have that con contextual conversation about that incident. So other thing that they can do is click that View Details button, and that is basically a deep link to the Power App. So if you click that View Details button, it's basically a deep link. So it opens the app in a personal scope, and it could be on the, ch on the channel as well but it opens straight away on that instant. And again, this just saves time for the user to go straight away where, where they need to go. Uh, other thing that we recommend using a lot is like providing a quick button to start a chat with someone. So in this case, if the instant someone shared that with you or someone is assigned to that instant, just provide one action there. With one click, you are redirected to a chat with that person. That again, just saves user time. And yeah, it looks very cool. So yeah, next week I'm going to present all of that uh, and go a little bit more deeper on the technical side of how you can implement that. And the sample app, we're going to upload that to GitHub as well and make as a sample that you all can download from GitHub and use. Excellent. Thank you, Marcus. That, that from us. Yes, thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Stuart. Really, really cool stuff. Then let's move to Gary. Gary was uh, second demo today, and then Ahmad is the third one, a uh, quarter to hour. So, Gary, you'll go next. Yeah. Uh, we can see the screen. Take it away. Perfect. Great. Thanks, Vaista. Uh, uh, well, hello, everyone. My name is Gary Trinder. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how you're going to be able to bring your existing projects to Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. So what I'm going to do is cover a few uh, new features that are coming in the, the, the next release of, of Teams uh, Toolkit. It's going to make it much easier for you to take what you have, bring it to Teams Toolkit if you've had issues uh, in the uh, in the past that for whatever reason you've not been able to uh, uh, to, to try it out with the existing projects. Um, I just want to quickly cover uh, kind of the scenario of of what you typically go through at the moment to create a uh, 
a Microsoft Teams app, let's say you're creating a project, you're creating a, uh, a bot. Um, one of the things that you're going to have to do, first of all, is go into Azure and do some setup. You're going to have to configure Azure AD, AD app registrations, uh, an Azure bot service, uh, configure SSO as well on, on Azure AD. You're then going to have to set up your project. Um, you know, you might be cloning a sample from somewhere. You're going to have to uh, run npm install to get all the uh, the modules in. You're going to have to update the environment variables as well, adding all the IDs and secrets of everything that you've just set up in uh, in Azure as well, moving all those across. Then when you've got all that set up, you need to start your web server. But you first need to start ngrok. You need the tunnel. Um, so that the the uh, the bot service can talk to your uh, code uh, on on your local machine, send messages backwards and, and forwards. That gives you a dynamic URL. Um, so you need to update your app, manif app manifest. Uh, you then need to update the bot and tell tell the bot which messaging um, uh, URL to use uh, in the new domain. Then start your web server. And then finally, once you've done all that, you then need to package up your uh, your app create your your app manifest um, as well and then sideload that into teams it's a lot of effort before you even started really thinking about code and developing it's a lot of a lot of work and hopefully this is going to be in the past now so if this is the pa if this this is the current if this is going to be the past what's going to replace it well automation we don't want to have to do all of these things we just want to hit a button and it happened. And Teams Toolkit Visual Studio Code uh, is an extension that is helping helping people now do that to uh, create and debug and deploy, publish Microsoft Teams apps into their tenants really fast. Just create a project, press F5, and just start developing. You know, no more manual configurations or, or setups. Just let that automation do the groundwork for you, leaving you time to uh, actually develop your your applications however teams toolkit great for getting started however there's 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 a few issues with the current version in in how it's been uh designed and it, we see comments like this like i don't really know what toolkit is doing behind the scenes it's not really clear what is happening i'm hitting f5 magic's happening that's great but i really want to know and I want to be able to change what it's doing as well. It's it's doing most things for me, but actually I want to add bits to it and extend um, extend what toolkit is providing. An important one, I want to reuse resources that have already been provisioned rather than toolkit go and create everything from, from scratch. Like every app is brand new. I actually want to bring my own bot service. I want to bring my own Azure AD app registrations um, and let toolkit use that. And a final one as well, um, certainly in the, in the bot scenario, is you know I can't use ngrok as my organization blocks it, which means I can't use the, the tool because it, it's very opinionated. It wants to use ngrok for, for that tunneling. So the good news is uh, all of this feedback has been taken on board and has been addressed in, in the new version, which is, which is coming. So I'm just going to quickly go through some of these key features. Um, one of the big improvements is this concept of a project file. Um, and this project file is, if you're familiar with uh, GitHub workflows, um, it's a YAML file which basically describes the whole process. So whereas before, oh, I, I don't really know what's happening. Well, now it's in one file. You can see what is happening at different stages. And there's three different stages that that this project file can have this workflow. So you've got a provision um, stage, a deploy stage, and a publish stage as well. We can uh, execute these independently and add tasks uh, into, these, uh, in, into these phases. And these tasks are actions. So each action um, is kind of like an individual block that just describes that step of what's actually uh, going to happen. It's really clear and easy to see what exactly is happening um, and and when it's happening as well, and the, the steps that that uh, that it's it's going to take. So the new Teams toolkit comes with a set of predefined actions. Um, there are actually 26 available actions, and here here are all of them. 
don't worry if you can't catch them um, because it's all documented. If you want to go take a look, go to aka.ms slash teamsfx uh, dash actions. And these are all of the actions that enable you as a developer to just add and extend these project files with your actions. And they cover a whole host of you know very specific uh, tasks like creating and updating uh, Azure AD app registrations to more generic uh, kind of you know run NPM commands, uh, run an ARM deployment as well. So there's a wide range of, uh, of, of actions that you can choose from. And finally, uh, for the, the people who uh, you know, are not able to use NGROC, uh, NGROC is no longer going to be the default. Um, so as of the, 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 the next version, Visual Studio Dev Tunnels is going to be used as the default tunneling service as well. So that's just going to be running. That's in uh, Visual Studio Code. We've still got the dynamic uh, URL in there as well, but uh, if you're an organization that is you know, blocking NGROC, maybe this is something that you can uh, look into. If you still want to use NGROC though, you can obviously change back um, and there's documentation for, for you to be able to do that as well. Okay, so I was talking about bringing your project uh, to Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. So. What I wanted to show was um, a process that I went through recently where I started with a sample, uh, this Teams conversation box, the SSO Quick Start, um, which is a very simple uh, sample, which is you know, just implementing SSO. Uh, it's using an Azure bot service and it's using the SSO uh, uh, OAuth uh, configuration uh, feature in Azure bot service. And what I wanted to do is to just bring that into Teams Toolkit. And this is the process that I, that I went through. So to quickly give you an overview of the steps, I created a new project for Teams Toolkit. I didn't have to. Um, I could have just added some of the, the files in from Toolkit into, into my project, but I just wanted a bit of a clean slate. Um, so I then copied environment variables of my old project to my, my new project. I updated the app manifest moved the source code over, updated the dependencies, and then updated the workflow steps to make sure that uh, the app was working in exactly the same way um, as it was previously, but it was in toolkit running, giving me that F5 uh, capability to get up and running really quickly. And I have a migrated project. So uh, if you want to go look after, uh, look at the the final uh, code, the final project, um, this is all available on GitHub at, at the uh, URL uh, below, uh, and I'll share that uh, afterwards. So let's take a look at uh, some code. Uh, well, actually, first, let's take a look at the existing app. So the existing app has an uh, Azure AD. Uh, app registration, so it's all set up. I went through, did all this uh, manually, so all my hard work I could reuse in the new Teams toolkit. I didn't have to start from from scratch. Um, and I've got bot service as well, uh, which is all configured. Um, it's got OAuth configuration in there as well. This was already provided. So there's all there's all my uh, details uh, in in there. And here is the actual project. So this is the old project. Uh, so this is not in Teams Toolkit, but we can see we've got an app package here. Uh, so I've got my manifest, which I had to manually zip up and then uh, actually uh, deploy manually into my uh, uh, Teams environment so, so that I could actually test it. Uh, we've got uh, some source code. So we've got a bots folder, dialog folder, we've got the index.js as well, which which where our web server um, code uh, uh, lives. Uh, we've got the environment variables as well. So in here we've got the app IDs, the app passwords, connection names, um, things that we can reuse in our in our application. Oh, we've also got a graph client as well. This is doing SSO. It's it's actually calling the the graph. So let's take a look at the uh, the project, the final project, and I'll step through um, the areas of the project where I I made changes um, to uh, to bring all of this into uh, Teams Toolkit project. So here we have our project. Uh, so this was just created using a a bot template um, using the Teams Toolkit Create New App wizard. 
So this is a V5 project. Um, so uh, we can see I've got my bots folder, I've got my dialogues folder. So this is the source code from, from the other uh, project. I have my app package up here, which contains my, my manifest, uh, which I, I brought across. We have an M folder, which contains all of my environment variables as well. Um, so I copied those across. I've also got an infra folder, which is just, you know, it's enhanced the sample already because you by default, you get bicep files that will provision some of the uh, the resources in Azure. One of them is the Azure bot. And that was great because I already had a bicep file that I could take and then amend for for my uh, for my own own needs. Uh, also, got a simple graph client code there as well, and the the index.js, which uh, which was the the web server code. So, first thing I, that I actually did was I moved all the environment variables over. So let's take a look at the uh, env .local file. So in here, I simply just copied in and pasted the values into here. I didn't have to do anything, just provided it the, the ID that, that already exists. And um, in this case, it's the I, the bot ID and the team's app ID are exactly the same, but I updated those placeholders. Um, and then what I did was I updated my manifest. So if I come into the manifest, here's pretty much a carbon copy of, of what the old project was. However, because I'm in Teams Toolkit, I get the ability to uh, add placeholder values. So you can see here I'm using this token replacement. You can see the value in there. So you can really uh, easily inject these, these variable values uh, into the manifest. So this is something that actually was available in, in the V4 projects. But actually now in V5, it's even better because these placeholders go everywhere. Uh, you can use them across your whole project and they will just get injected in uh, build time, which is really, really useful. Um, so I'd already mentioned uh, I've brought the environment variables across. I've updated my manifest and I've brought my source code uh, across as well. Now, um, one of the things which which I mentioned earlier was this uh, project file. So this teams app dot local dot yaml file is is where kind of like the the magic happens when I hit F5. Here's all the provisioning that's going to take place, like creating the teams app, um, creating the the uh, bot uh, Active Directory app as well. Now, it, even though it says create, uh, it actually does an update as well. So it's idempotent, which is nice. So it'll just, you know, if you can run this as many times as you like, it'll either, if it doesn't exist, it'll create it. If uh, if it's uh, it does exist, it will just update it as, as well. Now, uh, this whole file is the default file. Um, I've actually commented one section out um, because I had to I had to update it. So it's worth knowing that when you create a bot using Teams Toolkit, it uses bot framework portal to create a, a bot registration. Now, the sample that I'm using is using an Azure uh, bot service, and it's using a feature from that service for it to work. So I couldn't use this, um, but because of the flexibility of the tool, I was actually able to a, create an ARM template, a bicep template, which goes and updates that uh, that bot service every time I hit F5, which is great because I know that my dynamic URL for my tunnel is going to be changing every single time, and I need to update that uh, in my in my bot on, on my bot as well. And um, so that was nice that I was able to add in this ARM deploy uh, step instead. And um, so so that, that can actually deploy things into Azure, even though I'm doing quote, local development. And then finally, what I added was um, a file to update my SSO permissions on uh, the Azure AD app. And I could do that by adding in this AAD manifest JSON. I actually went to the Azure portal, copied the whole manifest, dropped it into this file, added in some placeholders as well. So get that ability to add in the, the bot ID. Uh, and in here, you know, we've got all the required resources. Toolkit's actually doing some hard work for us. It's actually telling us, you know, translating the ID to the to the display name. Um, and I can come into here and I can add more scopes if I want. I can hit F5 and that will go, um, you know, it'll go and update that in Azure. And it's the same for the uh, 
for the bot service as well. If I go into infra, I have this Azure bots bicep file. And in here, it defines the, uh, the, the service details, which channels that I need, and also the graph connection as well. So if I want to change the scopes, I don't have to go into the portal anymore. I could just change it in here, hit F5, and that will be uh, done for me. So real benefits of, of using um, Teams toolkit here in the fact that I've taken a sample which was uh, hard and a lot of manual kind of uh, labor to get to get going. Now it's in a great place. I can actually share this with other members of, of my team and, and they could just hit F5 and it'll go and actually provision all of this stuff for them without actually needing to go to the, uh, the, the portal, which is a fantastic, a fantastic update. So all of this is available for, for you to, today. Uh, you can try the next version of Teams Toolkit. Just click the switch uh, to pre-release a version in, um, in Visual Studio Code in the, in the marketplace if you've already got it installed. And if you want to check out uh, the, the guide as well for more details on V5 and what is coming, go to aka.ms slash teamsfx dash v5.0 dash guide. And with that, thank you. Excellent, thank you, Gary. Let's let's jump. Aisha is going to do a quick intro for Ahmad's uh, session. Aisha, let me quickly introduce Ahmad. We have hacked together Microsoft Graph and .NET first place winner with us today. Um, Ahmed is here and he built Magic Knot app using Microsoft Graph, conversational language understanding, cognitive service, and .NET. Ahmed will walk us through how he built Magic Knot app, and I'm excited to hear more about his project. Over to you, Ahmed. Take it over. Hey, thanks so much for having me here. I proceed to sharing my screen. So, so I will start first by introducing myself very quick. So basically, I'm a software engineer at Contraforce, a startup that's specialized in providing uh, SaaS services to simplify the cybersecurity life of small and medium businesses. Uh, what I do there is almost everything Azure and .NET. Back in the front end, I work as a full stack developer. Uh, my education is um, I don't have formal education. I have my education is basically coming from Microsoft. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, uh, certified solutions developer, and Azure developer as well. Um, I do some training on my YouTube channel, AK Academy, so where I talk about Azure, serverless, and mostly Blazor and .NET. And currently writing my book that will be published early this summer, Mastering Blazor WebAssembly. So yeah, you can reach out to me on Twitter, YouTube and also on my personal website that you can see below. So the agenda for this talk is going to be, I will just start by talking quickly about the Hack Together Hackathon, uh, then uh, the Microsoft the Graph API and the SDK uh, very quickly. Uh, then I will talk about the Magic Note app, uh, what it does, what it is, and what it solves, basically. And then we will see a quick demo of that. So basically, Microsoft announced the Hack Together app from March 1st to March 15th, which was a good opportunity for me because I was lazy to, uh, to, to basically build something for Windows 11 natively. That was the main goal. But when I saw that there is also Microsoft Graph and Microsoft released the new Microsoft Graph SDK version, uh, basically in our work, we are depending on Graph a lot. but we use Microsoft Graph using the, the REST endpoint directly, but not the SDK. So basically, that was a good opportunity for me to, to discover the SDK and then apply that in the real world in an app, then try to transform that into our work. So I'll move to basically just introduce the Microsoft Graph very quick. So basically, Microsoft Graph API is a REST uh, web API or the set of HTTP endpoints that allows you to communicate with um, all the Microsoft productivity services and solutions like, uh, for example, the Microsoft Teams, the messages, the calendar events, the OneDrive, photos, etc. So you can, uh, using the Microsoft Graph API, you have a superpower basically to uh, to communicate or integrate your apps with what Microsoft has in, in, in that set of productivity utility that's being used across hundreds of millions of users around the world. So basically taking advantage of Graph gives you the power either to, if you have an existing apps that you can extend their capabilities, so your users can bring what they have from like, let's say the calendars and events and meetings into your own app, or maybe you can build an app fully on, on, on top of Microsoft Graph, if, if it's not just an extending feature, like for example, having a to-do app or the Magic Note app that I'm going to show in a bit, that basically 
depending fully on Microsoft Graph. So um, yeah, so and as situated with the Microsoft Graph API, there the Microsoft Graph SDK. Um, if you want to communicate with the Microsoft Graph API, Microsoft Documentations is rich with everything you need to know, but uh, you can you can either go with the calls manually using the making the calls using the HTTP providers, like just making the get post and post requests. Sorry, I'm talking like a bit technically, but uh, Microsoft also have the Graph SDK that's available for different programming languages. So you can leverage this package, whatever if you are writing code with .NET, Python, um, or whatever. So you can, uh, for example, I show here a code snippet from C Sharp that actually adding a calendar event. So you can see how simple it is. You can just build the calendar object in here and then just call the post async method and that's it. And Microsoft is also there is on GitHub a tons of samples that allows you to do this, which simplified the process of this kind of communication instead of just going and making the calls manually, which is basically what I was doing before. And we will keep doing it our work, but we will plan to move to Microsoft to Graph SDK. So this hackathon was a good opportunity to discover this library a bit deeply. So Right now, I'm going to talk about the Magic Note app, which is the idea that I decided to participate with in the hackathon. So basically, this app is using the AI, especially the Microsoft language understanding services, to basically the, the, the idea comes from like a personal use first, because every day at night I plan what I'm going to do in the next day from work, writing, because especially that I'm kind of a little bit multitasker. So what I do is uh, I add like a couple of to-do items, then I add the meetings on the calendar, and then I proceed with um, doing some to-do items on the Microsoft to-do app. So basically that was a bit boring and switching between the apps, uh, losing the context and stuff like that. So I decided to build this utility. Uh, here you can find the link for, uh, for the GitHub repo where you can see all the code and all the description about the app and how it works. I'll put it in the chat soon. So, here is the quick um, point of uh, how the app actually works. So right now, or what I was doing before is that if I want to add set of tasks, for example, tomorrow I'm going to write five pages. I'm going to work on this project. I'm going to record this video, and then I will be meeting with my friend or going uh, play soccer or stuff like that. So I have to open each app and add the task exactly where, for example, the to do added here, the Teams meeting in case there is any, and the calendar events. So basically, that's as you can see, it's uh, it was a bit boring for me having to switch between the apps and losing the context, and it's actually taking time. So I wasn't always consistent of doing that. So I decided that to do something to solve this issue by basically when you have everything in your mind, so you can just have a single text box, or um, or maybe you can use like the uh, speech to text feature from your keyboard, whether you are on Windows or Android or whatever. So you can just see what you have in mind, all what you have. You don't need to switch to the context or lose what 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 you basically have at the moment. So give those to the Magic Note app, and then the Magic Note will be responsible for understanding what you are trying to do. And then it goes to each app using the Microsoft Graph and uh, set uh, this stuff. So this is basically what the main goal and motivation behind that. So I have done the work, so let's right now see the app in action, basically. So I will go this, and then I will go to the magic note to the app. So uh, the app currently is available as a Windows 10 or 11 app uh, because I have developed it using the WinUI SDK. I was planning to make it available for Android and iOS, but for the sake of hackathon, I just went into Windows because I wanted to get back to Windows development as I have stayed like for more than three years away from that. So the first point is to log in with your Microsoft account. Obviously, um, you can log in with, with your work or your personal account. So I'll log in with my personal account here. So basically, as you can see, it's very basic, very simple. Only one text box for all what you have in mind. So to not waste time writing, here I have a couple of stuff that I have. So for example, I copy this. So you can fill out this note using your natural language. You don't need to type anything in a specific way. So you can just throw what you have in your mind directly in this text box. So for example, I would meet with John and Emma to study for the exam, for example. 
uh, clean the house, read some pages, and meditate for a couple of minutes. And I need to go to the library at 9 p.m. So, yeah, you just after writing this, you can click the analyze button. So the app basically proceeds with this gives you the chance to review if the app and the AI what came up with is actually on the same page with what you have. Because at the end of the day, even with all the development of AI, uh, there is a big chance for mistakes all the time. So uh, this gives you the chance to just to plan. But by doing this, Basically, you're always having ideas in mind. You, there is no need to open those stuff. You can just write them here, click analyze, and then right now it's just time for review if you make sure that everything is okay. So it detects what every sentence means. Uh, this one, like for example, study for the exam, it looks like a meeting because there is some people involved like John and Emma. Uh, clean my house, it seems the to-do task, read some pages also, meditate for a couple minutes. And this one will be added to the calendar as go to the library from. 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. So what it also does when you mention some names within the note, it tries to go to your contacts and fetch uh, those names with their emails. So basically, I've just mentioned here John and Emma, and here it tries to fill them all like John Smith with their emails, Emma uh, Watson with their emails. Also, if there is like a wrong email or the email is not mentioned, so you can basically update that. And you can check this, like save contact changes after submit. So basically, this will update the contact on your uh, contacts uh, that are synced with your Microsoft account. So this also gives you a chance to make some changes. Like I don't want to read some pages. Like I want to write a couple pages, or maybe you can just get rid of it at all. So. Uh, basically, this is it. Sometimes uh, you just take a quick look and click looks good to me, or you basically make some changes, add or remove some stuff. So once everything's okay, you can just hit looks good to me, and this is all what you need to do. So yeah, here we go. Um, right now, the data will be synced with the Microsoft to do. So right now, I'll bring it. This is the Microsoft to do. So the two tabs has been added. Clean my house and meditate for a couple minutes. And if you check the calendar in here, you can also see that if we navigate Wednesday, you can see the study for the exam and go to the library and they have study for the exam twice because uh, an email has been sent for the invite for my other emails. That's why you can see this twice. So we can demonstrate that the meeting is working properly. So if you open this, you can see that this is as a meeting. You can respond and this one is an as an event like go to library. Yeah. So everything is just working fine. This is the this is the this is all what the app is basically doing. So and currently I'm the only user of it, but that's not bad. So basically this is everything. Thank you, Ahmad. That was really, really cool. Awesome stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. Thanks so much. Really, really cool application. And we're going to close up for the day, but awesome, awesome demos today. Thank you, everybody. I know that 15 minutes is always so hard. There's so much to talk about um, because the, the applications and solutions are so cool. We rather want to have multiple demos than two long demos as well. So there's a there's a thinking behind of this as well. But I, I, I always apologize on, on going a bit late. Now, um, let's quickly recap uh, on next week. We'll have Marcus uh, continuing to Power Platform Solution, Microsoft Teams, Example Scenario, and Deep Dive. Then Aisha Pass is going to talk about building Outlook add-ins using the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. So Visual Teams Toolkit is not only for Teams applications, you can actually integrate those applications with Outlook add-ins, and that's a really, really cool scenario as well. So that's a week from now, 2nd of May, 8 a.m. Pacific time. On, on Related on today's call, uh, please, please do give us feedback, or not only on today's call, but in general about this community call. So if you have suggestions, ideas, and all of that, please, please use the AKMS community calls feedback and, and let us know what you would like to see within this course. Um, but that's it for now. Um, please note you cannot access the recording directly from chat, even though that kind of indicates that you would be able to do that. That is not possible. We do publish the recording in 24 hours at the Microsoft 365 Power Platform Community YouTube channel at the AKMS Community Video. Subscribe in there. Other than that, thank you for this one. See you within a week. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye.